Hey everyone, I'm the Dr. Bob Lee. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're watching Open. You know, it's that live interactive program that brings the Bronx and New York City straight to your TV set. So, you know, you can stay connected to us through social media at BronxNet TV. Here he is, leading things off. Our first guest is a master percussionist, an entrepreneur, and he's had more than three decades of success in the music industry. And he's taken that experience to start a brand new business. It's called Soul Snack. So please welcome to the show, Ralph Roll. Roll got the Soul Snacks. Go ahead, boy. <laughs> What's up, man? How you been, Bob? It's good to see good. you, man. Nice to see you. Yeah, man. So yeah, things us, are good. How, Just... how, did that, how did you get that going? I mean, of course, you know, you, you're, you're a musician. You played with just about everybody. Tell us some of the people that you played with and then jump into how you... Um, uh, I've played business. with... Um, I've recorded with uh, uh, Notorious B.I.G., uh, Nas, um, D'Angelo, Erica Badu, India Irie, Aretha Franklin. Uh, I've toured with um, Freddie Jackson, Najee, Na Rogers and Sheik. Yeah. Um, uh, I've played live on uh, on television shows with uh, uh, many different folks. I've done work with Vanessa Williams and, and Bette Midler and Sting, Bono, uh, Paul Simon. Um, you know, just a wide range of, of uh, different folks. It's been fun. Yeah, um, and, I, and I'm from Bronx. And I'm from Bronx River. Bronx River, Bronx taking yeah. it to Harlem. Um, you know, you you played all over the place. So how did you uh, delve into this new business called Soul Snacks? Um, gr growing up, it, uh, you know, even though I'm a musician, I was a shy kid, and uh -huh. I I didn't have the kind of swag that my friends had. In my that was just my opinion. Yeah, like yeah. they would just they could just walk up to girls and talk, and <laughs> you know, and I was I was a little I was a nerd. You know, I, did, I got, did you learn later on? <laughs> I learned later on, but that you know that took that took years. Yeah. <laughs> but the beginning introduction was uh, was all about you know yeah. meeting a girl and and you know kind of swaying her with cookies <laughs> or something nice, you know. And I yeah. I know you know that's a nerd move, but it worked. <laughs> but it works, right? <laughs> it worked then, yeah. <laughs> so so how did how did you get into it? Oh. As far as the cookies are concerned, I yeah. I was just just baking as a kid, and I learned it from my grandmother, my mother, uh -huh. and I kept it up. Uh, so after my my grandmother, my mother passed away, uh, I just was baking. And my production company moved into my apartment, and I told the guys one day, my friend Gerard and my friend Armando, we were doing productions <clears throat> for uh, different groups, and. Um, I said, you know what? I'm going to go bake some cookies. They're like, what, what are you talking about? What are you going to go bake uh -huh. cookies for? Yeah. So I said, let me just go whip these up real quick. So I went and baked some cookies. I brought them back in the studio. And it was like, hey, yo. So now, now make sure every time <laughs> that we get together, you have these cookies because these things are good. Yeah, so, yeah. And so then not too long after that, my girlfriend moved in. And uh, when it came to the holidays, we wanted to give our gifts to our friends and family. Uh -huh. And it was 36 people on the list. And we didn't have the money for that many people. So I said, why don't we just bake the cookies? Yeah, yeah. So she said, sounds like a good idea. So we baked the cookies, we sent it out to everybody and everybody responded very kindly and uh, was saying, you know, these are really good. You might want to sell them. Yeah. So during that time, I was um, playing at an open mic at Sylvia. And Melba, who owns Melba's restaurant, right. what was the proprietor of that night. So I called Melba and I said, Mel, I got this idea. I want to sell cookies. Can I bring them to, you know, the open mic. And she said, of course. So I brought him in. The The band was a, a young lady named Shelby J, who was a singer with Prince. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if you know Shelby. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mike, Mike, Mike Phillips, who's, who's a now signed to Hidden Beach, also played with Prince. The guitar mm -hmm. player was a guy named Mike Campbell, who used to play with uh, Shaka Khan. Yeah. And, and so all of these local musicians were just doing open mics, yeah. And I was at the Apollo on Wednesday nights. So we gave out a few pieces of cookies and everyone liked them and they bought the few bags that we had. And I was so ill-prepared. I had nothing to give people out there as far as like a number. So I, I, it just turned into a, a crazy situation because there was a guy sitting at the bar 
from a magazine called YSB Magazine. It was used to be yeah. owned by BET. So he said, I, I would love to do an interview on you. And then, I, I, you know, we started talking and he found out that I was the drummer for Showtime at the Apollo. And my girlfriend wow. also grew up in the project. She was the uh, she graduated from Juilliard. So we both had these humble beginnings, but we both, you know, went on to do some great things. So he does the interview. I asked my sister for her paging number because I don't want to put my house number, you know, in the magazine. <laughs> Yeah. So my sister, my sister gives me her pager number. You remember back in the day, you had the pager with the pin number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so we that that ended up in the magazine. Some people don't so, know what you're talking about, though. But I, oh, I, I, well, you know, well, back in the day, back in the back in the '90s, people used to have pages on their hip. Everybody that was halfway cool had yeah. a pager. So I wasn't halfway cool because I didn't have a pager. So <laughs> my I put my sister's number in the magazine. So we will get a couple of calls. The magazine article came out first day. She got like a few calls later on that afternoon. She got a few calls the next day. She got like 10 calls and then later she got 30 calls. So now we're trying to fulfill all of these, these orders coming out of the apartment. So yeah. then I, I moved across the street to my friend's mother's brownstone. That was my first actual baking space Yeah, uh, in the Bronx. All of it was done in the Bronx. Yeah. It's kind of cool on Stratford Avenue. There you go. Yeah, so, so that's how it all got started. Yeah, it went viral on a beeper, huh? The Crazy. beeper was blown up. They blown up my beeper. <laughs> you know, you you know, back in the day, somebody get a beat your whole up. Y'all gotta go <laughs> find a pay phone, man. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's good, that was, man. I, thank uh, you. Uh, were you there? You were the drummer when I was hosting the Apollo Theater, right? Absolutely. Yeah, what's the name had that thing that said Bob Lee, Bob. <laughs> but we had a great time though. Do you remember what you used to say when somebody got booed off? What did I say? You would go, oh no, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and the audience would go, yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 They don't use right. that now, see? From then to, to Steve Harvey to uh, you got a number of people, uh, Capone, and now Monique. Yeah, Monique, and now they a lot have, of people don't uh, realize Whoopi Goldberg was a host for a minute too. She was, yeah, yeah, wow. Mm -hmm. So I can say I was part of that crew, the world famous Apollo Theater. Yeah, yeah. So wait a minute now. So you're selling these cookies; it's just getting bigger and bigger. Um, yes. So do you have them in stores now? Is it packaged and everything? We do have them in stores. Um, we just got picked up by Walmart and Kroger. Woo! Hey, there you go. Yeah, so Walmart gave us 789 stores, and we're just waiting to hear back from Kroger. We're actually oh, in man. the system as vendors for Kroger, but they haven't given us the stores yet. Oh, but you're it, it's, need, oh, you need a it's big, a big leap. leap. <laughs> well, so we place, how you bake all of these now? You, they're, they're being baked in a facility in New Jersey. There you go. Uh, yeah, it's a huge you have to come out of the, come out of the Bronx kitchen and get into like a, a manufacturing place or baking. That's a, yeah. Yeah, but we you know, part of my my deal with with uh with my new partners was that I will always um have a have a a foothold as far as the company is concerned in the Bronx. I never want to yeah. just up and take my company, you know, that's just not the person I am. So, but we are moving, we're moving to a bigger facility. And it's, it's like a really, yeah, it's a, the, this, the facility we're moving in, it uh, used to be um, the uh, Spofford Detention Center. Oh, wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. And they, That's they, 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 the building, I think, right? Yeah, it's right around the, the corner from the bank, right around the corner, so. Yeah, yeah. What what happened is it, it, it was closed down. It was they they basically said that there was too many horrible things that was going on in Spofford. And they came in and closed it down, tore the whole thing down and put up affordable housing and spaces yeah. for, for small business. And fortunately, we uh we got the, one of the spaces. So I'll be signing the lease in about a week. Beautiful, and, man. And it's, it's 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 for me it was important from a from a from a global standpoint. And what I mean by that is, as you know, being from the Bronx, you know that we kind of get a bad rap. So many times when I'm out there on the road, I'm doing shows, I do interviews, they'll ask me about the Bronx and people will say, do you still live in the Bronx? And I go, yeah, I do. And it's like, oh, it's so, it's so bad in the Bronx. I'm like, well, 
you you might say that, but you know, we do have the Bronx Bombers here, and we yeah, do yeah. have we have the biggest botanical you know garden in 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 uh, I think yeah. the United States. So there's a lot of pluses around here. We, you know, we got great things, and I always talk yeah. about that. So coming into this space, knowing what it came from, to be able to talk about where it's gone to and that it's been revitalized in our space, not only are we going to be baking cookies and have a cafe to be able to sell, and we're going to do internet and local, we're putting a culinary school in the space as well. Ooh, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And in that bank note building, if you just want to check it out, they have a culinary arts thing in a big kitchen up there. So check that out later on. But um, yeah. But but thank you for hanging out with us. They're gonna wrap me up, and I want to talk to you yeah. more because you have a whole lot to talk about musically and you know in the in the baking industry. Um, but I know you brought those two things together. We wish you all luck in the world. Congratulations, and uh, make thank sure you, you keep a private space in the Bronx where you can still have that private kitchen where you can cook for some local people. I'm oh, just baking. Bronx. Uh, <laughs> that's where I'm from, man. I'm from you know. Hey Ralph Roll, what's that Soul Snacks website where people can go to get more information? Uh, well, you go to soulsnacks.com and uh, you can order cookies there and you can find out all of the stores that will be listed in Walmart and then Kroger coming soon. There you so, go. Uh, yeah, man. There you go. Ralph Roll, master percussionist and entrepreneur. And he does this thing with Soul Snacks. Make sure you pick up and eat up all his cookies. All right, we'll Thank take you. a break right here. We'll uh, come back and we've got a whole lot more open. Coming up next.